more friends are joining in this morning. Good morning, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Rick Cram. I'm part of the Wilson Square family, and I'm also an uh, author of a book in progress called Plan to Be Your Best as You Navigate Change. I might uh, share a page or two from, from that a little bit later on, but we've got a great lineup. I'm going to do a few more clicks as we're welcoming in. We've got probably several, uh, a few score or more people joining in for a great Friday morning. We're going to ignore the, the clouds outside. We're going to make our own sunshine and have some fun together for an hour. We've got also some wonderful uh, things to share with you. Um, we'll, we'll have a moment from the Swellsey Report, uh, Beth Shedd and her photography, Anderson's Jewelers about uh, jewelry, cleaning jewelry. We'll see some beautiful diamonds. Uh, a nice short video from Bach to Rock for those of you who want to think about or share some information about how to drum, even just how to hold uh, the drumsticks. Um, more from uh, the good people at Page Waterman between Ryan and Sturdy. So we'll have, uh, we'll have a few things to get into. Why don't we actually start, if I may, uh, Deb, to um, talk about the Swellsley Report for a moment and see what, what's new from your corner of the, of the town and of the internet. Hi, good to see everybody. How's doing this morning. I hope everything's going well. Um, I have Bob here too. But we'll talk a little bit about Swellsley and um, how we've been interesting with our mission, which is always to tell you more than you really want to know about Wellesley. With all of you, and the way we're conducting our business right now is a little bit not out there in the world as I did in the past. Um, instead, we're doing things like. Now I'm, I'm going to pause just for a second. The, the signal is breaking up, Deborah. I, I, I don't know how, if everyone was able to hear you. I only heard just a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is mute all and then I'm going to unmute uh, you. So, let me see if this might actually help the, the audio a bit now let me just uh, find you here and unmute you let's do a sound check and uh can uh, go ahead and speak deborah and bob good morning good to see you how are you all right we can hear you well so actually deborah if you wouldn't mind uh please go ahead and and uh, begin again okay i'll start again just talking a little bit about the swellsy report and how we've been working in keeping with our mission, which is to tell you more than you really want to know about Wellesley, Massachusetts. Like all of you, we're a small business. Uh, we're conducting business in a really different way this spring than we have in the past. Uh, in the past, we'd be out in the community finding out about things. Now we're doing things like watching town meeting. I'm on the phone a lot. I'm talking to people. Um, you know, our goal is always to get the news first. But still, even though it seems like there's not much going on in town, you go around and you see empty streets, you see quiet, we still have managed to have enough to get 21 posts out this week. Um, we have things like Wellesley High School athletes who will run for sandwiches for frontline workers. That was one of our top stories this week. The kids raised almost $20,000 for a virtual run and um, they purchased sandwiches from Camellas that were going to frontline workers for Mass General in Boston. And I don't think they are doing, putting it all towards sandwiches. I think they have other things that they're going towards, but that's part of the story. Um, things like Boston, uh, the Board of Selectmen men men member Jack Morgan is resigning in May. That was one of our stories. And certain things are perennial, like um, every year the town of Wellesley purchases 500 saplings as an Arbor Day um, lesson for all the fourth graders in Wellesley. So the Rotary Club and the DPW had these 500 persimmon saplings, and they put them in places around town so that people could come and pick them up. So those are just a few of the things. Bob, did you want to say something? There were a lot of things going on this week, uh, big fire, down on Washington Street, uh, the fire department sent us some really scary and spectacular photos from that. And yeah, so things just keep happening. And then I think we're all gonna wanna keep an eye on what's going on with the Board of Selectmen today and the Board of Health as they are talking about possible new rules regarding masks in town. So they're having a meeting, I think at noon. Very good, very good. What do you, what are you, are you getting much feedback right now in terms of 
uh, what your readers are, how they're reacting to either of these times or, or to the news during this time? Well, I think a lot of people are looking for silver linings or positive stories. So we're getting a lot of tips on various groups that are making masks or doing things like Deborah said with the high school runners who are raising money. So people are trying to look for the positive, I think. Yes, yes. Uh, speaking of masks, and let me just switch my view here to uh, see if I can find Vin, are you still with us this morning? And let me find uh, where, where you are and I can make sure that you're unmuted. There you are. Let me uh, unmute you there, Vin. And um, with uh, the Rotary Club, if uh, I'm clicking unmute, and if you can do the same on your end, okay. there we go. Yeah. Um, tell, what's, what's new? How many masks have you and the Rotary made? Um, well, we have, I think we just got all of the um, materials needed to make 250 masks. So that's going to be our first batch. And we'll probably start uh, assembling them, you know, next week and probably start delivering some of the, the following week. So, um, you know, it's in process uh, that we're doing that. Are you, would you say you're ramping up? Yeah. Are you ramping up? Is this going to be the beginning of the production of many more? Um, well, I, I think if there's a need for it, we definitely will. You know, we, we feel we can make thousands of them, but we just want to make sure that they're going to be uh, useful to people. We think they will be, but, you know, we just want to, uh, you know, take that first, the first step and then assemble them, see how that goes, and then deliver them. So, so my, my guess is, um, you know, we'll, we'll wind up making maybe, you know, a couple of thousand of them over time. So. Terrific. That's excellent. What would you want everyone to know in terms of uh, if they support the Rotary Club right now, where will the dollars go? Is it into this particular effort or are you also involved with some of your other benevolent uh, works as well? Uh, no, uh, we, we have a fundraiser going on. Um, and what we're doing is for the restaurants that supported us for our major fundraiser during the year, the Taste of Wellesley, um, we are... Uh, you know, the, the funds raised there are going to buy meals from those restaurants, there's uh, uh, 12 in total. And uh, those uh, meals are going to, uh, you know, care workers. Uh, we start delivering, actually today, we're starting to deliver to two of the Framingham hospitals. And next week we're delivering, um, I think a total of a thousand meals next week to Elizabeth Seaton, to um, Beth Israel Hospital, and to I think Childs River. Uh, uh, I guess it's called the community center. So, so we're active. We're trying to, you know, find ways of helping, you know, both the restaurants and the care workers with that program. <laughs> we do have a GoFundMe page, and you can get that on um, our Rotary website. It's uh, WellesleyRotary.org. Wonderful. You're doing fantastic work. I think we ought to all give them a round of applause. What do you say? A absolutely. That's wonderful. So I just recently um, uh, have gotten to know. First, some images on Instagram from around a Wellesley that looks like they are so much fun. And it's, there, it's the work of Beth Shedd. Do you all know Beth? She is absolutely uh, fantastic, great energy, absolutely. Let's give Beth a round of applause. And uh, let, me, let me share with you uh, first this particular uh, image. It's a collage of just some of the photographs that she's taken. But I'm so glad, Beth, that you're, you're here. And I'd love for you to um, first tell us, how did you get into photography? I'm curious, I love photography. I was into it, I've been into it ever since my teens. Um, but uh, tell me about yourself and tell us all about yourself a bit. You got a couple hours? <laughs> um, no, um, you know, I picked up a camera probably on Christmas day when I was eight years old. And um, I've loved capturing uh, landscape beauty and then sort of fleeting moments. Um, and they were always like family gatherings, birthday parties that I might be at, um, funny things in college. And then um, about 10 years ago, my husband Chris gave me a really good Nikon camera. And I realized that you could take amazing pictures on auto mode. And several years after that, I started going to school on it. And I really learned about um, fine photography and how you can make a moment look more significant by really, really good light and, um, and in good posing and composition. So it sort of moved from just a passive interest in a moment to doing it correctly so that it has impact. Yes, wonderful. Your images are terrific. Uh, Chris, I've got to ask you, 
when you bought her the camera, did you have any idea what was about to begin? So I, she, she has always wanted to, uh, you know, everywhere we go, we go on vacation, she just can see the beauty in, in, in everything we look at. Um, so I was very it was selfish on my end, so because I knew she'd be able to 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 grow and and make this a great business, and um, so I had hopes, but uh, she's taken it well beyond that. Uh, that's wonderful. She's doing uh, great things. Thank thank you for giving her that gift of the, the <laughs> camera. Uh, started something uh, wonderful, and and Beth, what gave you the idea to do the uh, Wellesley Home Days? Well, in a nutshell, the way my mind works is when I'm under stress, I seek to connect. And, um, and any significant event that's happened in my life, um, when something negative could be perceived to be happening, I immediately seek to find my helpers. And um, I am very fond of our town. We moved here in 1989, the year we got married. And I love everything about it. Even, I know haters gonna hate, but I have not found something that wasn't worth joining in and doing something more to help. And I have a couple favorite quotes, but one of them that really resonates and it's been with me for my whole life is never complain about something you're not gonna do something about. And so a couple of years ago after the Trump election and there was so much um, alienation between people not wanting to talk about politics and about how they were feeling, I thought, well, let's just, let's stop that. And I'm gonna use my platform of photography and journalism and talk to people who I've known in town since some of them since 89, some of them more recently. And I started a series called Wellesley Wednesdays where every Wednesday I interviewed somebody who I knew, respected, was curious about and asked them what they were about, why they did what they did and what brought them joy in doing it. And so I did that for about 60 weeks and it was enormously satisfying and that ended and I had a display at the library last year which brought a lot of connection, which mission accomplished was what I wanted. And when the um, COVID crisis began in March, I got concerned because I know that isolation is incredibly uh, fearful situation for me. And I know it is for many other people. And because I think first of silver linings, I thought what good can come from this? And I had no idea it was gonna go on for as long as it was gonna go on. But I started talking to people, I think it was mid-March. Um, I labeled it Wellesley Home Days because we were all at home. And I started talking to people about what good was coming at that moment. And it was new. So people were playing games and they were, you know, doing, you know, family Zooms and there were just the beginning of it. And as it got, went on after another 20, 25 days, I thought, gee, many, we have all these merchants out there who we can't access and they are half of the reason why Chris and I moved to Wellesley. Now we moved here for the schools and property values, but at its core, it's about our town center. And so I thought, how can I support some of those individuals who I've come to think of as friends and who are really the uh, spark point for me loving my town. Every time I drive down Central Street and Linden Street, I have this kind of you know, warm feeling. So anyway, um, so I went to Wasik's and Cafe Mangal and Anderson's Jewelers and a lot of the people that I patronize frequently. And it resonated with people. And a lot of people said to me, gosh, I didn't know Cafe Mangal was open. I didn't know Western Road Cafe was open. I didn't know I could get a bracelet from Vicky at Anderson. So um, it, it was just, uh, it was a snowball and it made me feel good. And it did the ripple that I was hoping for, which was connecting people. Oh, you're doing it wonderfully. And let me bring up, I've got some photos that we can uh, uh, all take a look at together. And let me just bring this up. Here we go. Uh, walk us through some of these. Uh, can you all uh, see this? Yeah, so that's the Ali family. Everybody probably knows uh, Femina Ali. Um, phenomenal dentistry family. Um, very benevolent, active family in town. And in love with their crazy, uh, their dog and um, Femina's cooking. I had people hold props, things that were significant to them. You know, um, they're holding books that they're reading or ways that they're connecting through their careers. Oh, that's terrific. Let's continue on. Of course, we all oh, know. Okay. <laughs> well, there's one with and one without masks. So we were prepared for either unlikely outcome, but sort of the heart of Anderson's like, wow, I love that store. Everything about it. It's like cheers for me walking in there and having them know me and know what I like is just um, another thing I love about our town. Yes, that's terrific. Well, the Anchormans, if anybody knows them, um, this is just perfectly them that antique car and happy hour and two crazy teenage sons. It's perfect. <laughs> and the Bangus, uh, the Bangus, you know, she works for the Red Sox. So that was opening day. And um, 
you know, making the best of it. And dear Mary Bowers, hi Mary, I know you're on here. Um, this was at the beginning when I could actually get within 10 feet of Mary. Now I think you, you know, there, there, there's lockdown at Waterstone, but um, Cafe Mangal, when they were just, you know, becoming, this is weeks and weeks ago. Um, this dear family, the, the Capecci Beauregards, she was going in for diagnostic workup for a brain tumor. And there she is on uh, Zoom. Um, uh, the DeAngelis wow. with their uh, COVID snowball, I, I, you know, um, yeah, and their family in the blizzard that we had back, you know, whatever in March. The, I don't know if anybody follows Julia DePeister, but she is replicating art through her um, daily uh, um, uh, Instagram post. Um, this is Elizabeth Seaton. I'm part of the uh, Community Fund for Wellesley and our COVID Relief Fund just awarded its first round of grants, and that's Elizabeth Seaton saying thank you. Uh, the dear people at uh, Fells Market, my neighbors and my friends who have been a lifeline for us uh, in Wellesley. Um, <clears throat> after that was the Fronteros kind of yucking it up with me. We had them do props. It was fun. This is the Gormleys, the next one with the big Christmas tree at the corner of uh, Washington Street at 135. Um, Green's Hardware is the next one. And gosh, those dear people have given us such connection in our homes with every home project and repair that we're doing. Um, my dear friend Alyssa and her golden retrievers as we're going for a walk at Elm Bank. Oh, and Damien, you know, who I'm so thrilled that I've met now and Amy. Um, yeah, the, yeah, we, we, we zoomed past him, but, um, but anyway, yeah. Crazy neighbors with their kids. Um, you know, my parents come up in another film, you know, they, at their apartment and, oh yeah, this is, this is my next door neighbors. Um, just having a moment and being real, so. Um, yeah, my dear parents doing a sing-along on March 17th for St. Patrick's Day at Phillips Park. And then coordinating the troops at uh, Roach Brothers so we could all see them and thank them for everything they've done for us. They've been such a lifeline for every single one of us. And I started crying when I took the picture because it was so moving to me. Very moving. Very moving. Oh, you know, family artwork that's going on, homeschooling that's happening all around us. People are making it work. It's stressful, but they're doing it. And my dear friend Ellen and her daughter was holed up in, uh, in New York City at the time. So she was with us virtually uh, via her head. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, and the Sybold family over on Abbott Road. And there they are, you know, dad's working from home. Mom's making it all happen. And the kids are probably not thrilled about having to be in the picture, but they were there. Uh, excellent. And then Lynn Smith with one of her many costumes and connections to our community. Most people probably know Lynn very well. Uh, she's a real dynamo. This, this family had a huge spruce tree that just, for the grace of God, missed their house. So we took a picture, silver linings. And the, uh, and, and, yeah, well, here we go. My staple and um, the most beautiful service that, you know, that Wellesley can offer at Wasix. Um, they were my first um, merchant. Uh, and then Wellesley Books, they were doing that Easter Bunny um, promotion. And, um, you know, people, they've done an amazing thing for our town, too, in connecting us and keeping us reading and doing their live author studies, uh, which has been wonderful. And then neighbors and friends from the Hardy School, just, you know, that's a moment in time, you know, each of them doing their own thing there. So that's, that's great. So are you going to continue? I am. I'm going to go on as long as everybody thinks it's appropriate for me to do so. Great. You know, I don't want to be glib about any of this and make it seem overly simple or easy, but um, I'm available. I'm having people contact me all the time. I have about 10 of them already in process that I'm uh, waiting to post. So if I can help any of the merchants in Wellesley Square and beyond, it would be my joy to do it. Yeah, that's terrific. Thank you. Let's give Beth a round of applause. Keep, keep Thank it up. You. Thank you. It's, it's a gift that you're giving and sharing with all of us. Thank you so much. You do it. So n next up is um, Anderson Jewelers. I, I, Vicki and I were talking, and we were all talking about a variety of merchants the other day, saying, all right, uh, Vicki, what, what do you think people would probably enjoy knowing right about now? Uh, people are looking for things to do at home, maybe cleaning jewelry perhaps, but she sent uh, a variety of photographs of just some gorgeous uh, jewelry. And if we uh, go through some of these photographs, uh, and just uh, let's go ahead and do a, a mic check. Can, can we all hear you, Vicki? Go ahead and. Um, can you hear me? Yes, very good, yeah. very good. Okay. I've got a variety of, uh, let, me, let me first ask you, what are you actually going to, uh, to share with us? Well, when you asked me a how to, I thought, I just threw out um, how to purchase 
how to choose the perfect engagement ring. Oh, yeah. And now when I look at the audience here, I'm sure that <laughs> that was something that was that happened a long time ago. So I guess you'll have to bear with me. And maybe this is a practice for the future of selling engagement rings on Zoom. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, it could come to that. Anyways. Um, well, I, why don't you go ahead and walk us. I'm going to serve up these uh, images and sure. see if this works well. Uh, where we can take a look at, at them. Uh, and can, can you all see this uh, assortment of, of diamonds? I can see it. Very, very good. Why don't yeah. you go ahead and describe okay, so, what we're looking at? So um, I'm describing where you, where you start. Well, you, usually you start with finding the right partner to marry. And, and that um, part is done. And now you want to place a ring on her finger and you have so many choices and where to begin. Will the ring be a surprise? Will you shop together, perhaps online or um, maybe maybe with family? But anyways, you want to choose the shape of the diamond first. If you want round or if she'd like round or pear shape or marquee or whatever suits her hand and whatever she'd like to wear for the rest of her life. And so um, we sell GIA certified diamonds, which is really the way to go. They're the most trusted um, gem lab in the world. And um, they, you want to look at the four C's, the color, clarity, cut, and carat weight um, of each diamond. And with a GIA certified diamond, it will come with a certificate, which is really very important. And um, these are the understanding diamond values with the color starting from B and going to Z. And usually, you'd want to choose something in the near color list colorless or near colorless range for um, optimum light. And then clarity is also important if it has internal inclusions, carbon, feathers. So you want to stay really from here over this way. So something in the, even the SI1 range would be nice. You wouldn't see any inclusions with the naked eye. And then the cut is really important. You, um, excellent or very good is what we recommend to give it the um, brilliance and the sparkle, and then the carat weight. Um, we have diamonds listed on our website, and we can get them. And then you choose the ring. Do you want it to be, would she like a white metal, like platinum, which is really strong and durable, and holds the diamond well? A solitaire is a nice start. Um, a three-stone halo ring is also very popular. You can get a bigger look with smaller stones. Sometimes family stones work well. Here's one with side diamonds that are um, shared pong set. It's a great look, really um, a bigger look, I would say, also. And then um, here's a three stone ring that has a few side diamonds um, in a double row. And that, that's a beautiful look as well. And um, here's a pear shape that I think is great in a halo. It makes a pear shape look really great. Uh, for a choice, a long, slender finger. It's a nice choice. Beautiful ring. Yes. And then the oval is also beautiful with a halo, something different and updated and nice. And this is um, a vintage vintage ring altogether with um, an older cut diamond surrounded by emeralds and then, di and then diamonds. And so for somebody looking for something, you know, non-traditional, perhaps um, a vintage ring is a beautiful choice. It's clearly unique. Now, uh, so, how, how long has Anderson's been in existence, Wiki? Since we've been in existence since 1947, when I, my grandfather started the company. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, what's, it, what's it been like through the years? Well, there's been a lot of changes through the years, I uh, would definitely say. Um, but diamonds have always been what we've sold right from the beginning. And um, the, the styles have changed. The, we, there were years when it was just a Tiffany ring, you know, four prong or six prong. That was the choice. And it was usually yellow gold and it was um, easy. And now there are so many choices and people sometimes want to custom design their own ring. And we do that. We have um, Gwen, who's excellent um, with designing, and Jim also. <clears throat> and there are different um, pad d design companies that we work with. and. Yeah, we can we can work together to um, make you the, the perfect engagement ring. That's wonderful. One last question before I want to uh, refer to the wonderful comment by uh, Cynthia. Have you seen 
differences in, in recent years in terms of what people are looking for in an engagement ring? Oh, definitely. I would say definitely. Um, the halo became really huge for a long time. Everyone wanted a um, usually a cushion cut diamond with a halo of diamonds around it and going down the side. Very popular. Yes. So, yeah, that's what I would say. And then so, very thin bands today. They like very thin bands with um, like diamonds down the side. Sometimes, sometimes um, a three stone ring with a sapphire on each side is popular too. Very nice. Very nice. Now, as you can all probably see there, Cynthia, thank you so much for that comment uh, regarding the story of how Anderson's mm -hmm. provided the, uh, the right kind of box for her to hold the silverware. It's a, a COVID-19 yeah. project. Tell us about that, Vicki. Well, she, Cynthia called early on into our closing to say that she had cleaned her, um, she was cleaning her dining room and she realized she needed some boxes to put her, store her flatware in. And so we had a couple, I photographed them, I emailed her the photos, she, she chose what she wanted and I delivered them to her house um, from a distance. And um, she was the one that told me about Beth Shed and her photography. And I just thought it was awesome to see silver linings and to see people um, in front of their homes. And, and then she started the businesses. And, and I just think that's what makes wealth a great, you know, the customers and the connections and the, and the you, Rick, and the Wealthy Merchants Association. I, I feel more connected now, I think, than I did before to all of my friends. In uh, wealth, so. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for that. That's, that's terrific. We're, we're, and thank you for all of that. Thank you for being a part of the community. Now, I think it, it would only make sense that um, before we, we do this natural transition from jewelry to rock and roll, of course, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Does anybody have any questions of, of Vicki at all regarding engagement rings, diamonds, or anything having to do with all the wonderful things under their roof? Any questions for Vicki? Raise your hand if you'd like to. There's some applause. Let's give Vicki a round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Vicki. Thank Mickey. you, Rip. Thank you. Now, now, of course, that natural segue. Uh, Don, I'm going to, can you unmute yourself, Don? And I'm trying to unmute you too. There we go. And let me look for you. Where are you? Um, I, I've, I'm dying to ask you, uh, and let me just find you here so I can bring you up on the screen. Uh, there you are, Don. Yeah. Um, good morning. Good to see you. How are you today? I'm good. How are you all today? Doing great. Glad you're here. And I've got to ask you, what's the first question that people ask you when they, they come through your door? Well, they haven't come through the door for a while yet. Sure, true. Uh, but the, uh, when uh, we're, we converted to uh, online lessons several weeks ago, and, and probably the first question is uh, availability. That's still the question everybody always asks, like, uh, can you fit me in at this time or that time? Um, that's uh, pretty much the, the biggest uh, question. So most of our teachers are from Berkeley and they're all loving working from home now because they don't have to commute anywhere. So uh, uh, how, how, how are you finding the transition to doing things virtually? Um, well, it was really good until Wellesley stepped up their, uh, their, um, their teacher interactions with the students. So we had to change all our schedules around. But, uh, and, and really, uh, the only thing we're hearing is uh, some people are getting zoomed out right now. They're uh, the Zoom uh, fatigue, I guess it's called. And uh, so we're hearing, you know, the kids are going from, uh, from, from lessons to uh, um, music lessons and things like that. So they're, so we're trying to be very uh, careful with that. But part of our, our agenda is always make sure the kids have fun uh, while they're learning music. So, uh, so we are still a good break for them, I think. Yes, very good, very good. Actually, uh, let me say thank you to all of you who are uh, supporting Bach to Rock and all the merchants and to Chris, thank you for your wonderful comment there. I think you can all uh, see that uh, we're, we're one community and uh, that's what makes us strong and, and keeps us united. So uh, Don, you shared a, a video, uh, you sent me a video that I'll play for a moment. Uh, tell yeah. us about Let me uh, give you an intro. So, uh, so unlike uh, like the students, um, I think we're all getting zoomed out a little bit too much. Uh, I mean, I have, I have Zoom poker games, I have Zoom um, uh, physical trainers, I, and then we have lots of Zoom lessons. So, so uh, eventually people get really nervous, and, and, and there's a natural thing where you're going to be tapping your pen, waiting for your turn to talk, or waiting for the meeting to get over. But 
if you want to learn how to tap it right, I think we've got the right video for you. So you can really learn how to tap it and get a lot more beats per second. All right, that's, the, that's a great setup. Let me go ahead and uh, find it here and hopefully the audio will, will work. Let's enjoy taking a look at some of what Box Rock is, is doing. Hey everyone, my name is Jesse and I'm a drum teacher here at Box Rock in McLean, Virginia. And today's tip is gonna be on how to properly hold our drumsticks. One of the most important playing techniques is properly holding the drumsticks. A good grip can enhance your speed, can enhance fluidity, and enhance your rebound. On top of that, it's also really good for your hand health because your hands, wrists, and arms take a lot less tension than they normally would. While there are many different types of grips that we can use, today we're gonna to focus on matched grip. And matched grip is when you hold both sticks exactly the same way. So right hand and left hand will end up looking like they're in a mirror. All right, now let's get started. Our first step is gonna be finding the fulcrum point. This is where our grip begins. So you grab your stick and you get your thumb and your forefinger and then you just connect. Lightly pinch. The thumb should be pointing directly up towards the tip of the stick and then the forefinger should be at a slight angle. We don't want it to be completely flat or perpendicular and we don't want it to be pointing up. We want it to be at a nice comfortable angle. That way we ensure good control and then it should be very nice and relaxed. Now that we've got the fulcrum point set, we're gonna loosely wrap the rest of our fingers around the stick. Not too tight and not too loose. It should be loose enough to just stick another drumstick right in between that grip. And if you can't do that, it's probably gonna be a little too tight. So now that we've got our grip set, let's talk about our playing position. When you're at rest, your arms should be at your side, elbows nice and relaxed and shoulders relaxed. And then sticks should be angled inwards towards each other and downwards towards the center of the drum, just a, just a tad, all right? We don't wanna to be touching the drum and we don't wanna be touching the rim. If you do that, you gotta adjust accordingly. So now that we've got our grip set and our arms resting, we're gonna try and find the sweet spot of the drumstick. The sweet spot is where we get the most rebound, the most balance, but also the most comfort for the player and it ensures the most control. The sweet spot's generally between here and here on the drumstick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the stick with our grip and just play this, play the drum once. Let it follow through, let it bounce. And get a feel for how long it bounced. Was it a long time? Was it kind of short? Did it buzz out and then it's done? And now we're gonna choke up to the middle and try the same thing. And make a note of what happens. Is it shorter or is it longer than the first hit? All right, and now we're gonna choke down to the bottom and do the same thing. Now everyone has a different sweet spot and every drumstick can have its own sweet spot too. So play around with it, experiment on your own. You know, try choking up a little bit, try choking down a little bit, you never know. It could be the secret to unlocking your true potential. The first step to learning any musical instrument is developing good technique. And now you've got the tools at your disposal to start. So take the time, follow the steps, and start your journey off on the right beat. That's, that's terrific. That's terrific. What kind of reaction are you getting? Let's give everyone, let's give, uh, give them a round of applause. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, and so what do you have planned? Anything new, anything else new coming up? What you're going to do any, anything differently? Um, well, we're exploring with uh, starting to do some band programs again. And uh, we got our first one starting off uh, shortly. Um, Bands with Zoom is really difficult because of uh, the sound delays and things like that. But we're working through it right now, and that's going to be kind of fun because uh, uh, our, that's our team sport in music is uh, to play bands. So you can practice uh, throwing your ball as much as you can, but unless you throw it to somebody else to catch it, it's not going to be that as much fun. So, uh, so that's our, our new focus that we're going on right now. And, and the students have been great, parents have been great. And as I said in prior uh, sessions like this, I think it's great because the parents are really making sure the kids practice a lot now. So it's all good. <laughs> Yes, wonderful, wonderful. That's great. Thank you so much, Don, and we wish you all the best, and we'll look forward to seeing you in person real soon. So one of the oldest companies in Wellesley is the Page Waterman Gallery and Framing, and with us this morning is both uh, Sturdy Waterman, the owner, and uh, let me go through all the different uh, photographs here, the views of you. There, there you are, Ryan. I'm going to unmute the two of you. Uh, Sturdy and Ryan, good morning. Great to see you this morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Fine, thanks. It's great great to see you. And 
Um, I want to ask you, what do people ask of you? What, what are some of the top two or three most common questions people ask you? Well, certainly, you know, what we do, we, we um, sell art and we do custom picture framing. And so probably one of the most frequent concerns of customers are hanging their pictures. And um, people have concerns about the height and they have concerns about the weight of the picture and, and um, you know, whether, you know, the type of hardware you have to use to, to hold up a picture. So this particular picture is probably one of the longer pictures. I think we've, we've done bigger, but, but this one was long. I think that maybe it was uh, eight, nine feet long. And um, a cherry frame made a company in um, Boulder, Colorado. And even they had to have, you know, they had a hard time selecting wood. It's, uh, I, they had to, it took a while because they have to get perfect, long, straight pieces of, of cherry. Um, in order to do that. And, and this hanging project requires a, a little extra effort because a picture this long, you cannot put a wire in the back. Um, we won't get into that today, but, but it, it's something that I think is, is, would be challenging for a homeowner. But I think a normal picture is, is pretty easy and I can go, you know, I'll go through how, how that's done. Um, I think the first question people often have is the height. And you know uh, how how high do you hang a picture? Well, and and there is actually a, a sort of a, a rule, and it's, it's the center of a picture is 60 inches off the ground, and and most of the time that works. Uh, there are exceptions, you know, over a mantle. Obviously, it probably goes higher. Sometimes there are wains coating, and it will go higher. Um, but but on the whole, you start at 60 inches. Some taller people like to bump them up a bit, but some tall people hang them way too high and it, it looks sort of silly. So um, so 60 inches, the, the center of a picture. Um, and then as, and, and you don't need many weapons, um, tape measure, a hammer, just a normal hammer would do. We like to use, they make, uh, it, they're hard to find, we sell them here, but they make a, 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 a sort of the, the Mercedes of picture hooks, they're called Floriate hooks, and they're actually made in Germany, and they come in four sizes, 10, 20, 30, maybe five sizes. Yeah, 30, uh, 50 pound, and, um, and 75 pound. The 50 pound look like this. So they have two holes. And, um, and I think often people are concerned, like when you get up to a picture that's 50 pounds, do you need to find a stud? And the answer is most cases, no. These, these are not very big, but they're very well designed. If they go into the wall securely, um, you know they're 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 going to hold, uh, uh, hold uh, just fine. Just fine. Um, so you know that's pretty what much it. I don't want to bore people, but um, uh, it, it, it's it's not too hard to hang a picture. Um, I think on another day we could get into arrangements. I mean, behind me here you can see I have pictures just in my office, and I don't think it's the best arrangement, but. I'll show you. I sort of just have them around my my desk, and um, so the desk maybe determined the arrangement, and um, the ones in the center by a Japanese artist, abstract expressionist artist Toko Shinoda. I think Ryan did she turned 107 this year. She's 107 years old. Um, uh, yeah, just a couple weeks ago, actually. Couple couple weeks ago, which Honestly, is incredible. Yeah, at the end of my so she's still painting, probably one of the most famous artists in, in, in Japan. So that's an example of, you know, a pair, which I think is, is sometimes challenging for people because they have to be, um, uh, you know, at, at just the right height and, and they have to have to be level. Um, so I don't know whether, Ryan, do you have some things to add to, to, uh, to what I, I said? I, we, we both hung hundreds, probably thousands of pictures. It's, uh, yeah. So for us, it's, it's pretty easy. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's um, everyone's a little bit different. Um, I think something people struggle with is when they're looking at a space is how to fill it. You know, how if they have a wall that's eight feet, what size picture do they need to fill that space? And um, uh, you know, being a painter, I always that pick the art first and then worry about that. But um, but if you do need to fill that space, I always think there's there's a tendency to either overfill it or you get like a posted stamp look on the wall where it's far far too small so um 
pick the art first, but then, um, uh, but be wary of that. And, and framing can help those issues. Framing can, uh, can make things work and um, make a piece larger, make a piece sort of a little bit more slender if it needs to be. And um, that's what we're here to help with. That's wonderful. Thank you. And uh, uh, Susan Logan, it's great to see you. And I see that you've got a question. Uh, your, uh, your mic is on and, and say good morning to everybody. No, I just wanted to say hi and thank you so much for putting this together. This has really been so interesting. Um, and we do appreciate all of the wonderful businesses we have in Wellesley. Um, you guys are great and we hope you're all well and um, staying safe. Uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. We, we are so fortunate to have these wonderful uh, uh, merchants. We call them merchants, but they're really our, our neighbors. They're their core purpose is to be of service and a part of the community. Thank you so much for that, Susan. Uh, Ryan, I do want to ask you briefly, uh, there's, you're aw awfully immersed in a wonderful project right now called uh, Next Up. And let me just show the, the homepage of your website. <clears throat> Tell us what's, what's uh, starting uh, basically today and this weekend. This weekend. Um, sure. So next up is a uh, this is our our fourth year uh, hosting it. Uh, it's an online exhibition, um, which is fun this year actually uh, because we're group in all of the students are instead of having just a few selected that will show the gap. Um, it's it's great work. Every year I'm amazed at the the quality of the pieces and um, and just how advanced a lot of these student artists are, um, the engagement of a lot of the teachers. Uh, that's what ultimately makes the show successful is the fact that a lot of these teachers are so anxious to do these type of things to get these students to be more involved and they, their participation is just so fantastic. And um, that's what makes the work so good. Uh, this year's a great selection, uh, particularly the photography. I think this year was, um, just at a level that's that's really really impressive um the ceramics are always good they're always sort of you'd see them in a shop and think that it was a professional artist that did them and a lot of these kids are freshmen and sophomores in high school which is all the more impressive so um it's fun we we love doing it and uh we're going to continue doing it and um every year it's sort of one of the most fun projects that we do oh uh, good luck with that and uh I do want to encourage everyone to take a look at the wonderful selection of art by the high school students there as part of uh, Next Up 2020. Uh, terrific. Thank you very much. You know, any questions before we move on? We've got a couple more things to, uh, fun things to do before the end of the hour, but let me just uh, go through and see if anyone has a question. Of course, you can use your comments tool to uh, share any, any thoughts or questions that you might have. But one of the th unique things about uh, Wellesley is that it's actually a, 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 a town that is very progressive business-wise and just tuning in a few minutes ago is um, James Gray. James, let me look for you in the selection of all the different... Uh, where, where are you, James? Uh, there, there, there you are. Very good. Uh, hopefully uh, some of you know uh, James Gray, who is one of the founders and principals of a company called Tapple. Good morning, James. Good to see you. Rick, great to see you as well. And hello, everyone. Tell, tell us, what was the genesis for your company? So, um, so Rick, so uh, we started a uh, started the company around the concept, um, oddly enough, uh, that uh, people can use uh, their cell phones to contact, uh, contactlessly, in other words, without touching anything, um, access content anywhere, anytime about something specific. Um, if you uh, participated um, in the scavenger hunt um, uh, over Christmas time, uh, we were the company that used QR codes to put the uh, QR, uh, QR snowflakes into stores uh, and people could walk into your store and scan, scan the code and uh, register their visit uh, at your store. So that was basically, uh, or that is basically the concept around the platform uh, and so, but our niche and the area we were really focusing in on was the activation, like the scavenger hunt and activities like that, that were very much retail and brand focused. And um, we just, the company is just over a year old uh, and, you know, focusing on areas that 
uh, were basically uh, focused on a market that was all about people interacting with one another, timing is not necessarily that great. Uh, so uh, in these last, um, in these last uh, few weeks, uh, we've had to work with our clients who are activation agencies, people, 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 right? Um, and, and who represented brands and the like, uh, as they take all of their activities online to webinars like this. And oddly enough, we've become busier um, because everyone's having to sort of rethink their business. And as a startup, sometimes it's difficult to get your message heard or to get people to think, of, think differently about what it is they've been doing for so long. Uh, and we found that people, um, you know, as we changed our messaging, we weren't advertising, we weren't pushing products, we were kind of offering to help people. Um, these active agent agencies were really coming to us and saying, well, how could you help us with a webinar? Or how could, you know, how is our business is changing? How can you help us? And we've, um, you know, we've sort of transitioned a bit to being able to take uh, uh, venues like this and be able to put a QR code up during a presentation and allow people to pick out, take out their phones and scan the QR code and, and answer questions and the like. Uh, but was I think most fascinating coming out of this, and again, this is about trying to reposition your business when everything just, everything you know goes a different direction. Uh, we've really had a lot of activity recently, uh, just like just in the last week, um, of as, they're, as people are looking to open up the economy again, we've had commercial real estate uh, owners and managers and construction companies come to us and say, you know, how can, can you help us make our workplaces safer? Um, and the solution we, we, came, we came up with is essentially how our platform works anyway. And it's the idea that as people are entering um, businesses, um, uh, you know, uh, office buildings and the like, they can scan a QR code, uh, take a checklist, sort of saying, yes, I, I, I haven't had a fever, I haven't traveled out of the country, um, I haven't been in contact with anyone with COVID-19, and basically check the terms of service for entering a location. And this is something that really never, we never thought about, never thought was going to be something we would be dealing with. Um, but it's just been fascinating to have all the interest kind of come out of nowhere. And we've you know, we've been um, scheduling some uh, meetings with some pretty large uh, folks, all looking for a way to manage through what is something they just a month ago weren't even thinking about. That's really uh, quite fascinating. What an interesting time for you. And you, you shared with me this, and hopefully everyone can see it, uh, a number of slides here. And is this in full view for everyone to see? And, and James, do you want to walk us through a couple of points on this? Yeah, sure, Rick. Uh, and I'll, yeah, I know we're, we're short on time, so I'll, I'll just be quick. So uh, if you go, just, uh, so you scroll up to the second to slide two there. Um, it's perfect. This, the idea is people are really wondering how do you make people safe um, or feel safe? And there's, there's also this notion of Apple and Google and a lot of people doing this contact, contact tracing. In other words, basically kind of big brother trying to figure out whether you're actually safe and whether you've been near anyone who's had COVID-19 and uh, the two things about that is one, do people feel comfortable with that? And two, uh, given the way our society works, and, and two, how long is that gonna take to get up and running? So we see ourselves as kind of a very quick up and running um, um, uh, um, uh, piece of technology that allows people really to sort of self-certify that, you know, that, I, that as far as I know, I'm healthy. I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know if I used this analogy a minute ago, but it's sort of like when you log on to a new software platform, they ask you to check the terms and conditions uh, you know, for using the platform. And that's kind of the approach we're taking on this is saying, yes, you know, check, check, check. I, I, I don't, I think I am safe. I think I am fine. I haven't been in contact with anyone. I haven't been told by a physician or I haven't tested positive for COVID-19. I should be allowed to enter this facility. And we don't collect data on people who answer no, you know, I'm not safe or yes, I have a fever. We just want people to say, check the box and say, yes, I think I am safe to enter this facility. Uh, and when they do that, and actually Rick can go to that slide four there, uh, you know, it's a very simple, or slide five, sorry. Uh, it's a very simple um, process that takes less than 20 seconds where you log in, you check some boxes, enter your email and your name, and now uh, you get a, a decal that is, is time stamped that says, yes, you know, you're green, uh, you, you are safe to enter, enter the facility. And it's really in talking to these building owners, the building managers, is they're really trying to figure out how to make people feel safe. How do they feel safe? How do you, and, and how to also, how do you get society to start thinking in a way that is 
I need to act for, for, for the good of society. If I have a fever, or I'm coughing, or I'm not feeling that well, maybe I shouldn't go outside, maybe I shouldn't go into a store, maybe I shouldn't go into an office building. So this is a way to sort of get people to start thinking in that direction as well. So it's not heavy handed, it's a sort of, it's a, it's a self-started uh, feature, but we also think it has some value. So it's been, actually for us, it's been a very interesting couple of weeks trying to twist or um, change what it is, how we operate, but using our same technology and our same platform, the same one that we used as uh, for the for the holiday stroll. Um, so it's been it's been very interesting. Excellent. It's, I, it sounds as though we're getting a glimpse into um, what we're going to be seeing more of probably in the weeks and months and, and year ahead in terms of what are the different ways that we're going to get back into some uh, form of normalcy and, and mm -hmm. open up again. We'll pr I'll probably see a number of uh, new applications to technology. That, that's really quite fascinating. Any quick pr predictions, James, in terms of what the weeks and months ahead look like uh, from a technology point of view? Uh, you know, I, well, I go back to sort of the way we look at things is we always thought that the contact list, when, when we talked about our cell phones and everyone having the hardware with them to come to these events and be able to interact with brands uh, more effectively than they ever had been before, we really were looking at it from a brand perspective as great ability for them to get some, maybe some more information, but also it's less costly. They don't have to set up kiosks. They don't have to set up iPads. They don't have to bring hardware to these events. Uh, we weren't looking at it as a safe, from a safety perspective. And I really do think your phones are going to be implemented more and more. You know, it's not always with QR codes, but it's going to be contact, uh, contactless payments, right? Stuff you do with Apple Pay already, that will skyrocket, right? I think people are going to want to be able to interact with product, but they're also going to want to be able to minimize their interaction with maybe other things that other people have, you know, have touched, right? We are a society, people are going to, I mean, I think you're going to see pen up demand of people wanting to go out. You see it on a nice, you know, nice weekend last weekend, you're going to see it this weekend, I, I, I'm sure. Uh, so there's, you know, we are social people and I think it's all going to come back, but I think there's certain, certain things like, people not going out when they're not feeling well. They don't want to risk getting other people ill. I think that'll continue. And I think uh, brands are going to start using technologies that allow certain transactions to happen in person, but with less touching, with less interaction uh, than, than before. Yes, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that, James. Well, thank, thank, you, th thank you all. Speaking of interaction, I've got a question for you all uh, based on a particular quote. I thought we'd, before we actually say adieu for the, the day, let me share this uh, quote with you uh, by Robert Frost. Poetry is when an emotion has, its, has, has found its thought and the thought has found words. Once again, poetry is when an emotion has found its thought and the thought has found words. And so speaking of words, words are important. I thought we would do a quick exercise just thinking about right now, what are your words regarding uh, where you're at, where are you, where's your head, where's your spirit right now in terms of uh, positive, what concerns do you have? And I thought we would just uh, use the comment tool and I'll open up all the mics to see what are the words that you're thinking about. I did this exercise with a group recently and they, they meet almost daily to discuss plan to be your best as you navigate change. And uh, we did this exercise, ended up being quite fascinating in terms of the the words, all the positivity that came out. Why don't you go ahead and use your uh, chat tool, uh, the comment tool, to just list one word or one phrase at a time that reflects what, what you're thinking this day or this week in terms of how you're navigating uh, these particular times. And then we'll, we'll share them with the community. Let's, let's see what we end up uh, sharing with them all. Uh, and let me um, unmute everybody. And so you can uh, just go ahead and share a, a word. And uh, I might actually, I'm going to go back to Beth. You're such a positive spirit. What word or two comes to mind in terms of, of uh, how you're navigating these times? Um, no um, surprise. No surprise. Connect. Connect. Um, when in doubt, reach out. Uh, I love that. When in doubt, reach out. Because we're, we're, not, uh, we're not here to go through anything alone, are we? We're here to go through things together as a community, and so we should. Uh, Katie from Kidville, I saw a smile on your face. You're always smiling. It's wonderful <laughs> to see you 
what what word comes to your mind um my first initial my oh yeah my mic's on okay um my first initial thought was just hope um but also one that's come up is is laughter i, I miss my kids laughter and you know sometimes i just have to laugh with my uh apartment mates to kind of get that hope there that hope but but events like this help. Yes, good. Because that's what this is all about. This is all about. Uh, meant, meant to help. Uh, Chris, uh, let me unmute you. Uh, Beth is such a, a positive spirit. I can't help but think that you're right there with her. And I'm trying to unmute you, Chris. Maybe uh, you're... Are you there? There you go. And let me see if I can unmute. There we go. What word, what word comes to your mind, Chris? I have to go with connection. Uh, you know, I, 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 being with Beth all the time, I, I, I know the uh, uh, I know the kind of person she is, and and, and what we all want to be. And I you know I feel sorry for people who are alone, uh, commiserate, and, and you know are sad about being alone. And I think if you are alone, you really need to be out there. And... Oh, I think you you froze. I want to say hello to Ellen. Ellen Scott, good to Your see you. Oh, very good. There was a little bit of a internet issue there for a second. Um, Ellen or uh, Kimberly, Emily, uh, what uh, what words come to your mind? And if you're muted, go ahead and unmute your, yourself and and sh raise your hand and go ahead and speak. Uh, uh, yes, Kimberly. Um, well, Isabel Harvey is mostly thankful for um, all the helpers out there um, to everyone in the community. Uh, to um, all the merchants. Um, this is an extremely difficult time and everyone has their stresses. And I find that um, people are extraordinarily helpful and uh, kind during this time. And as we change our business and as we're doing this crazy curbside every day between one and one thirty, people are extremely patient and kind and um, uh, just and also very thankful that we are doing curbside, <laughs> yes. which is funny. Um, and I'm happy to do it. Uh, oh, so awesome. I, I'm I'm very grateful for everyone's patience as we kind of, you know, change our direction and zig and zag and try different things that work and maybe don't work. But to all the helpers that are making it possible. A lot of wonderful words there. That's terrific. Uh, Alyssa, Keen, good to see you. Do you have a, a word? What word comes to mind when we ask that question? I guess hope, perhaps. Hope, hope, hope is a hope. wonderful, hope does not disappoint, does it? Right, hope for the future. That, that's terrific. And I, Ellen, Scott, I mentioned you earlier. I'm trying to unmute you, see if I can in include you in the conversation here. Uh, looks like you. You might need to click. Oh, there we go. There you go. Thank you. What word comes to your mind? Beth, a happy anniversary. Today is her sixth year anniversary of her very great business that we're all so happy to see every day. Uh, terrific. Oh, excellent. 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 Thank you all for that applause. Uh, Demian, you're, you're such a positive force. What word comes to your mind? Uh, everyone's already kind of said it, but I, I was thinking of hope. I, I was thinking of uh, we will all persevere after my daughter's motto of, of her school. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that we're all together, spending this morning together, spending this morning together, to all of us. And I also want to thank you, Rick. You've done a fabulous job. And, and thanks for hosting this. And, and again, thanks for everyone for joining us this morning. It's it's wonderful to see everyone's faces and to uh, to be together. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, thank you, Jimmy. My my pleasure. I see a couple of other uh, smiling faces. Uh, Kenna, I see your photograph, and I'm trying to unmute you. Do you want to offer up a, a word? It, lo it looks like you might need to unmute yourself. And as, as you're uh, as you're doing that, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry I don't know you, but I see the the word iPad. Oh, that's me. That's Kathy Manjo. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. Hi. Nice to see you, too. This has been a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I was born in Wellesley, so it's just really nice to see, you know, a lot of the companies that I grew up with, such as Anderson and stuff. I think what comes to my mind is that it's so inspiring to see all of 
the love that's come out of kind of a, a very tragic situation, meaning that, and it's, it's coming from an individual level and cascading and rippling out to a community and then rippling out to further than that community into the state and then from there, you know, into the world. And I'm just, I'm just so inspired by the spilling over, I think, of everyone's generosity in the cup of, of love, really. Oh, beautifully said, beautifully said. Thank you so much for that. That's, uh, we're going to be wrapping up in just a minute, but that's one of the most positive uh, sharing that uh, anyone could offer for us to, to get underway with our day. Uh, let me go back to Susan Logan. Susan, how about a word from you? What comes to mind? Um, like Kathy, I am really amazed at the, and grateful for how many, when I think of the doctors and nurses and the intelligence and the people who are putting together ideas for vaccines and things, I am in awe of the truly talented people that have put their talents to the service of others. It is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing to watch. I would encourage you all, the um, Berkeley School of Music put together a beautiful um, confirmation, um, beautiful um, piece, What the World Needs Now. Um, and they did it all from isolation. It is absolutely glorious. Um, but so many people have so much to give and doing it in such a positive way. And it's really hopeful that we as a nation can come together. Um, and I hope it's a great thing for the kids to see, you know, and learn who really basically, who are you in the face of adversity? Actually, that's an amazing point right there. Who are we? Who are we? you? Who am I? That's often a common question and something that can be shaken in a time of uncertainty and uh, dramatic change, or even not so dramatic change. It can shake our sense of self. When, and to your point, that is such a foundational aspect of who we are. Thank you for that. Gracie, Thank you for hosting. You? Oh, you're very welcome. Um, yeah, so kind of piggybacking off of what um, Susan said, I have a quote, um, the wisest mind is something yet to learn. Um, it was my yearbook quote when I graduated high school a million years ago. Um, and I think, you know, learning makes us better, whether it's on a micro level, like I made dumplings last night, they turned out terrible, but I learned something new. Um, but, you know, we as businesses um, are learning new things, being kind of faced with these crazy obstacles that we never expected to face, you know, maybe in this lifetime. Um, so, you know, as a business, as businesses, as a town, um, as a nation, even, um, I think, you know, learning makes us better, um, what to do, what not to do. Um, so hopefully that's one thing we can take out of all of this is the lessons we learn. You know, it, that what you're talking about in, in another word, if I may, is growth. Yeah, absolutely. We, we grow. And one of the best things that can happen from this is that we grow stronger. We grow as some of you are saying, closer together. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Emily, I see that you're muted, but I'd love to hear what you've got to say. I'm trying to unmute you. There we go. Good, good, good to see you. I just quickly wrote it in the chat. I have my last class of the day of the semester at 1030, so I have to get going soon. But um, I just wanted to say my words would probably be optimism. I think I've been thinking about that a lot. Like my mom said, like finding the silver lining and um, finding the little times to maybe go on a walk and quarantine with two other people here in Vermont and um, kind of finding the little things in the day that when we're feeling down or, um, I don't know, just pent up, we want to get out. We, we can go on a walk, obviously staying apart from other people, but um, kind of seeing the silver lining and things that the world still has out there and also compassion and understanding that people that are working in grocery stores and everything like that are also dealing with their own things but are being very selfless and I think kindness is goes a long way so just being understanding and kind to other people. Uh, words to the wise that's wonderful I can't help but get the sense listening to you that even when you're wearing a mask there's a smile underneath <laughs> you might not be able to see I I your, try. <laughs> your eyes smile and so, so do your words. That's wonderful. Any final thoughts or questions from any of you before we wrap up and get underway with the rest of our day? Go ahead and just raise your hand. Any final thoughts? Demian, any? Oh, yes, Vicki, go right ahead. Oh, my word. Am I unmuted? I think my word would be faith. Faith that we'll get through this, even though we can't see the end yet. I think faith will get us through. 
That's right. The faith is so true. As the good book says, uh, uh, perseverance leads to character, character mm -hmm. of hope, and, That's right. and hope does not disappoint. And That's right. Faith is a wonderful foundation for all. We have the things I've seen. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, by all means, uh, any other words or thoughts before we, we sign off? Yes, please. Hi, Kate. Um, I just wanted to say hello to everybody. Sorry, I've been multitasking. I'm teaching online and listening at the same time. So um, this was great. And I want to say congratulations to my mom. And uh, thank you for kind of inspiring all of us to take that positive outlook on things when it gets tough. Thank you. Yes, thumbs up. You know, that's a wonderful summary thought in terms of what this hour has provided. A lot of positivity we've heard uh, from uh, from Beth and all of you, uh, Sturdy, Ryan, Damien, all of you yeah. uh, who have been just a positive glowing example of of what uh, not just Wellesley is all about, but what you, you're about, of course, and, uh, and all that. that that's good. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, this went easy to fix. Any fi final thoughts? Yes, Debbie, I, please. I, I just want to say uh, another word is just happy and happy that we're all here together and yeah. spending time together this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, um, I think I'd like to get a raise of a pan, so just a yes. So like, I, would you, you know, next week or in the near future, um, would everyone be willing to do this again? I just wanted to get a feel for everyone because uh, I think it's very important that we stick together. So is everyone on board for doing this uh, at, sure. you know, on a weekly basis? Absolutely. Yes. That's wrong. And, 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 go up. and I think we gave a, a you know, round of applause to everyone that spoke, but I also think we should give a round of applause to, to Rick for hosting once again. Yeah. We've done a wonderful job bringing us together. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much. And thanks everyone for joining this morning. It's been, it's been wonderful and, and uh, started our day off very in a positive direction. Great. Have a wonderful Friday, everybody. Take good care. Go ahead. Any, fine, any other thoughts Thank after you. this, email us. And go to the website. We're all, all here for you. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.